Hello and welcome to ATI 4205. Uh, this session will be I will be talking about the educational systems logistics as an example of logistics, and that will assist you in um, the in understanding the concept of logistics and how it works in different areas. So school logistics, uh, school logistics systems include the transportation. Uh, the facility location and planning, scheduling, material handling, purchasing, and customer uh, service. Um, as a system, it involves the people, data, policies, and procedures, hardware, and software. And if you look at the system, you can map the uh, people to the uh, transportation to the facility to the planning to scheduling to material handling and so on the same for the data the same for policies and procedures in each area you will have people involved you will have data involved you will have policies and procedures involved you will have hardware and you will have uh, software so these the system components integrates with the logistics system uh, um, uh, components of uh, our activities or uh, operations. Uh, when you look at transportation uh, as part of uh, a logistics system, we are looking at uh, buses moving students to and from uh, schools uh, campuses. We are looking at the facility location and planning. Uh, the location of the school should be selected strategically and classroom layout should be optimized. Um, once we uh, uh, create the classroom environment, there are other classroom planning that will be involved, whether it's a classroom involvement by the administration, by the staff, or by uh, the uh, teachers themselves. Uh, scheduling um, classes should be scheduled or will be scheduled to effectively and efficiently serve students. Um, the same uh, instructor will be teaching more than one uh, class, so they need to schedule that for the teacher and uh, they need to schedule students for these classes. Purchasing and material handling, uh, which is identifying the required school uh, and classroom material. Uh, uh, order items, uh, receive those items, store them if needed, and then distribute to the classroom, to uh, the facility, or to uh, the uh, uh, different areas uh, within the uh, school or departments accordingly. And of course, all this process is to uh, provide uh, services for students, uh, which is education, and um, that's what uh, we are uh, trying uh, to do and that's what will be required from this school system. The uh, uh, part of the logistics providing meals for students and having a dedicated facility available to host students during breakfast and lunch which is the cafeteria. Um, uh, most uh, or if not all schools they have that cafeteria to host that. So that's another facility that we need to add in addition to the uh, sports facilities, um, different areas, the art or theater uh, facility. All these um, uh, facilities or buildings or um, areas should be added to serve the uh, school system. Uh, meals will include order, delivery, storage and serving for these meals. So that's another uh, uh, logistics uh, area or logistics uh, part of the system uh, that need to be dealt with. And we have for that, if uh, we are going to order, uh, then we need special equipment and appliances that will be, uh, that will support uh, the operations for uh, meal uh, delivery, storage and uh, serving. Um, including uh, fridges or um, uh, maybe uh, uh, stoves or uh, ovens or microwaves or whatever other appliances needed to uh, provide the uh, service or uh, to uh, complete the, this type of logistics. Most of the systems we are dealing with are open systems. Open systems means they interact with the environment 
when we say closed system closed system does not interact with anything does not interact with the environment is just closed on itself and there is no interaction between uh, the system and uh, the surrounding uh, components or uh, environment any changes when when you have an open system any changes in that system or in the surroundings will impact that system's operation since there is an interaction then uh, there is uh, an impact uh, for the closed system we don't have such a problem for the open system we have such a problem so how do we deal with the impact of the surrounding of the environment on that system um, for example an earthquake hurricane tornado flood wildlife or a pandemic might impact system operations um, the city the county and state have plans to deal with such disasters and get the uh, system back uh, to its operational uh, status as soon as possible so the the government uh, have a plan uh, and they have policies they have rules they have uh, certain uh, steps that they need to follow to do that now in the the pandemic in 2020 was different and other measures has to be taken or had to be taken we did not expect or the plans that the city or county or state has or have um, was not enough to deal with this pandemic so COVID-19 created additional challenges that uh, no cities no counties or states had a plan for or were prepared for the pandemic created many issues and challenges in the school logistics system and uh, you know here I'm just addressing the school logistics systems in other sessions we are going to start addressing the impact on uh, retail the impact on healthcare or the impact on uh, other areas and how did um, uh, uh, did we deal with it or what kind of questions or, or what was uh, some of the uh, options available and uh, how did that go so some of the questions that um, should be answered uh, when we, we are dealing with the uh, school logistics system is that uh, how can we get students safely to school um, so we are need to look at the challenges in busing students back and forth uh, to school if we are moving them uh, through buses what did the county or uh, the district do to move students back and forth without any problem um, uh, you know of course the adding the uh, sanitizers or uh, adding uh, the um, social distancing uh, rules or other rules all that was uh, not planned for so now they need to plan so those are part of the questions that was you know in um, um, in the basket and need, we need to answer them so basically every time we just draw something from that basket we'll find some a new challenge because we didn't see it before we didn't deal with it before um, how can we deliver course material to students uh, is going to be face to face hybrid or online what measures should be taken on campus and uh, in the classroom if we decided to uh, do the face to face um, uh, how about social distancing how about the masks uh, the hand washing stations the sanitization stations uh, what other measures do we need what, what uh, uh, additional plans or procedures or policies do we need uh, how can we protect teachers and st uh, staff um, um, do we need to provide for them PPEs the protection equipment um, and a safe environment uh, where can we get that how can we get that uh, what policies and procedures should be added to protect students teachers and staff uh, on campus and uh, even uh, if not on campus online or uh, through the hybrid what do we need to do uh, to make it happen uh, now purchasing we use uh, all the uh, staff used to purchase items that are related to school supplies with the pandemic there are new items that's been added uh, we didn't uh, buy masks before uh, we didn't uh, buy um, uh, uh, for example uh, uh, sanitization stations or uh, sanitizers or um, 
PPEs. So now uh, the purchasing department is moving towards something new, new items, and they need to find new vendors. Uh, and we are talking about districts, maybe schools, maybe even the states. So, and from state, from one state to another, different. From one district to another, different. So, are they um, uh, doing it individually? Uh, each district is uh, putting an order for the supplies. If they are, look at the competition between the different districts and different areas, and then you know, do we have? Uh, even this available for everybody um, if it's not available how long would it take to produce them how long would it take to ship them or to get them there at school would school uh, or all schools be ready when it starts all these questions were very important to answer to um, uh, address those challenges and those issues before uh, the start of the school year uh, other logistic challenges uh, uh, taking the decision of online learning lead to the need to purchase digital devices for uh, all online students. Students, uh, you know, when you are talking about elementary or middle school, not everybody have a laptop. So you need to uh, uh, provide laptops, tablets, um, iPads, any uh, portable device that they can use in the education system or in the online learning system. Um, once I have those devices, uh, we need to deliver uh, those devices to students. Um, but those devices need connections, needs internet. Uh, do they have stable internet? Uh, maybe they don't have internet at all. If they don't have internet at all in their area or at home, then what are we going to do? How are we, how are we going to provide uh, such a service? Um, Teachers and uh, teachers had, many teachers had technical problems of um, uh, delivering uh, or using the software uh, or um, also uh, with the stability of the internet. They don't have uh, enough internet bandwidth. Not to mention that even if I got all that done, um, then I need to think of which software to use to deliver the class material. There are lots of options. Which one is the most efficient one? And, you know, again, we don't have experience with these things since it's uh, new for most of uh, the uh, staff, faculty, and uh, administration uh, teaching these uh, courses. So uh, that was um, another challenge. Uh, uh, Another challenge that you know I didn't mention here, which is the servers. Now, when you have lots of people logging in to the same server, um, most of the time these servers will not be able to handle the traffic um, and the bandwidth of uh, people logging in to uh, that server and uh, will crash. Uh, so what uh, kind of server, how can I make it in a way that I have a machine or I have the network or the capabilities to handle the network traffic and the streaming, the video streaming for uh, that big amount of connections. Um, other logistical issues also or challenges, the distribution of textbooks. How can I get the textbooks to students? Okay, we uh, can think of, uh, you know, calling the publisher and make it electronic. Okay, uh, then th that's uh, one of the issues. Uh, but if it's uh, uh, paper, then we need to think of, of a way to get it to students. Um, the meals were served in, in the school for uh, students who could not afford to have a meal with them. So now we need to distribute those meals to uh, students at home. Um, some schools decided to uh, uh, distribute the meals through uh, parents and given uh, the parents the meals for the whole week. And uh, other schools decided to deliver to uh, the uh, uh, students serving uh, students at home. Um, distributing the digital devices, the, um, the portable devices that we talked about. And then um, if 
we have the face to face we have the online and we have the hybrid and we have all these um, you know we're breaking the uh, classroom into small uh, pieces instead of you know having 40 students in the class because of the size and because of the uh, um, crowd that will be in one uh, classroom area uh, we have to split them to uh, for social distancing to more than one uh, uh, section and if we do that then we have to think of do we have enough teachers do we have enough staff together to, to cover uh, those uh, classrooms or classes um, in addition when I have uh, even if I have all teachers or new teachers do I have enough training for uh, all to know how to use the software or hardware that we are uh, using um, with that with all these challenges there was an uh, impact on a global level so the educational system was one area only one area as we said before don't forget that we have problems in the healthcare industry we have problems in retail uh, the retail industry we have problems in the manufacturing in m many other services in the uh, 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 hotel industry or entertainment or you know all these areas now are they are all facing uh, similar problems or challenges in logistics so any change in demand in one system will impact other systems and as we have uh, a change in the educational system then uh, all these systems that interact with each other um, um, and complete each other uh, to uh, do their mission and to achieve their goals will be impacted as well uh, what was the impact on those uh, changes in the education system on retailing, distributing, manufacturing, and other services. How did that happen? Now, this is just a, a view. Uh, we are not here to uh, solve the problem. We are just uh, looking at um, how uh, the problem was addressed. Uh, we are looking at um, uh, some of the challenges some of the questions that you know uh, many entities many uh, uh, stakeholders involved in this system uh, uh, they were asking they were uh, trying to find a solution and how it's being addressed so this is just an example and uh, we'll talk more about other examples as we go uh, th uh, through or progress through the semester um, that will be all for this session. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you and have a great day.